So veganism or vegetarianism isn't working out for you? Don't worry, you are not alone. In this video, we're gonna get into some of the details about how to reintroduce meat in a safe and healthy way. Before we begin, please do remember that you are not alone on this journey. The biggest mistake I see from people who are reintroducing meat is that they try to do it on their own without support from their friends and family. Now, sometimes the supportive family and the supportive friends just aren't around. And in that case, working with a health coach is super important. If you'd like to work with a health coach who has made the transition out of veganism themselves, my contact details are in the description. Again, don't do this alone. The transition is difficult. If you do it without community, you're minimizing your chances of success. Okay, so the first step in any change process is the mindset. If you were vegan or vegetarian for any length of time, chances are you're carrying around some baggage. Now, there's nothing wrong with carrying around baggage. I mean, we all have baggage, we all have beliefs, but are those beliefs serving you or have they become a kind of a prison? And if you're watching the video, I think you know the answer to that question, right? They've become a prison. Okay, you may say, I, I have to change my mindset, I get it, but that's easier said than done. How do I actually do that? There's no one answer to that because it depends on what the particular baggage is that you're carrying, right? If you believe that a plant-based uh, diet is healthier, then listening to testimonials from people who've destroyed their health through veganism, that might be, help might be helpful, right? Um, and you can look for earlier interviews with Lear Keith on this channel, for example. She's just one of many people you can listen to. Um, if you've been trying to save the planet through veganism or vegetarianism, then look into some of the literature on regenerative agriculture and agroecology and try to understand how animals can, and in fact animals I think should be, part of a sustainable food system in order to reverse the damage that humans have done uh, with our unsustainable food system. If you've been quote unquote doing it for the animals, uh, then you can read up on crop deaths, um, you can read up on how getting bigger and bigger industrial farms has been destroying habitats and causing extinctions. Once we know it intellectually, that can be a starting point, but that's often not enough. Uh, the fact is for many of us, we've been carrying around this baggage, we've been carrying around these beliefs for so long that they have become, they've become part of our subconscious. So when we are talking about the mindset change at the beginning of this process, what we're really talking about is giving ourselves permission. Permission to prioritize our own health, permission to prioritize our own needs, permission even to be uncomfortable with ourselves for a little while, right? Because maybe you don't know exactly what you're doing, you have to acknowledge that you don't know. So permission to explore, permission to experiment, right? That said, people do the mindset change in different ways. So the different tools that we can use that help with the mindset change. What I find helps for many people is to use a diary, uh, just to write how you're feeling on a given day. Uh, this can also help if we can bind that diary with a sort of a, a food journal. So you write, you know, not just how you're feeling, but you also write what you're eating. And then eventually we can look back at that food journal and see how the mood improved or what other symptoms got better along with the dietary changes, right? Uh, also, if something's not suiting you, then th that may show up in the food journals as well. Another tool that can be powerful at this stage is to adopt some kind of a mantra or a saying that you tell yourself over and over again. So, for example, you can say, I give myself permission, and then end, end that sentence with whatever your current goal is, right? So you can say, I give myself permission to be healthy again, or I give myself permission to eat nourishing food, or it can even be something like, I give myself permission to make mistakes, to not be perfect the whole time. I give myself permission to fail, right? Because when we're trying something new, the chances are very high. We're not going to be perfect the first time. There's going to be a period of learning, and that involves some level of failure. We need to give ourselves permission to do that, right? Um, and when we're leaving a belief system, and for most of us, veganism or vegetarianism is a belief system, it's important, thing, it's important to say things like that that reaffirm our decision and express some confidence um, that, okay, we may, know not, we may not know exactly what we're doing tomorrow, but we, we're on the right trajectory and we will get it right eventually. Okay, so that's the mindset. Aside from mindset, what should you focus on? I think the next thing really is nutrient density. Uh, there are lots of nutrient-dense foods you could focus on, but for me, the ones that seem to be the most important with uh, people transitioning out of veganism or vegetarianism, number one would be ruminant meat, so that's beef or lamb or goat. Uh, number two, shellfish. I would say oysters, mussels, clams um, are at the top of that list. And number three is egg yolks. Now, why do I focus on these three? These foods tend to have some uh, things you might be deficient in as a vegan or even as a vegetarian. So the meat has lots of things, including heme iron, 
The shellfish is a fantastic source of B12 and zinc. Uh, the egg yolks have a lot of choline. Um, so that's where I sort of recommend people to go. But the fact is, most people come into this with a certain bias, right? And they've already been thinking about experimenting with some food. I see some people start with salmon or other fish. Some people start with chicken. That's fine. Um, to me, those aren't ideal foods for the transition. But if that's where you want to start, that's totally fine. But at some point, you probably want to have your blood work done. You want to look into iron deficiencies, B12 deficiencies, mineral deficiencies. And then you want to pair um, the foods that you're eating with whatever those deficiencies might be in, right? So for example, if you have um, a copper deficiency, then maybe beef liver. Beef liver would be something to look into. Um, if you have an iron deficiency, then maybe chicken liver or pork liver would be something to look into. In some cases, I see that the food alone um, isn't enough. So as this is especially the case if people have gut issues. So the starting point, um, I would say, is to increase the acidity of the stomach or maybe talk to a doctor and see if you suffer from low stomach acidity, as many people in general do, not just vegetarians and vegans, vegans right? So um, if you have low stomach acidity, then I'd say we need to supplement with something like uh, betaine hydrochloride. Um, you could also um, find that ox bile salts, that seems to work for some people. Um, again, consult your doctors uh, for, for, more, for, t for advice that's tailored to you. Um, if you have those digestive issues, you can also reach out to uh, an, um, myself or an ex-vegan health coach who might have, um, at least we've seen many other people go through this process, so we might be able to help you with that as well. The third thing to look out for, so the first was, um, the first was mindset, the second was nutrient density, the third is really plant toxicity. Now, I think this is one that many of us who are transitioning out of vegetarianism were not really ready to hear. Um, we've been told for years to eat more plants. We've been told that um, plants are good, plants are healthy. Maybe you even, even followed that advice and you got healthier when you first transitioned to veganism or vegetarianism, right? That was certainly my experience with veganism. Um, and to be honest, so to be honest, uh, for most people, most of the time, the anti-nutrients in plant food, so what are anti-nutrients in plant food? Um, plants... Unlike animals, they can't run away from predators. So they have to produce certain kind of chemicals to stop any kind of predator, whether that's insects or um, certain kinds of fungus and so on, or, he or animals like humans. So they have to produce um, some kind of chemical which will stop those um, animals from over-consuming the plant so that the plant can reproduce, right? Um, now, my reading of the literature is that most of the time, for most people, anti-nutrients aren't a problem, as I say. Uh, but what happens for many vegetarians and vegans is that we tend to over-consume the same plant foods day in and day out. So for me, it was soy. I used to eat soy in almost any, you know, many different forms, almost every, every meal, right? So there was soy milk for breakfast, there was tempeh for lunch, there was tofu for dinner. Uh, when I was doing that, I was increasing the exposure to the anti-nutrients in soy, right? So in this case, I'm talking about lectins, I'm talking about phytates in soy. Uh, after doing that for long enough, I was going to develop some kind of issue related to long-term exposure to those anti-nutrients, right? Um, and the most common issues that I see are increased intestin intestinal permeability, so that's leaky gut, which can sometimes lead to other problems, including autoimmune disorders um, and, and more. I would also say um, that we see some psychological disorders. I mean, maybe not full on like diagnosable psychological disorders, like at the clinical level. But when we reduce the exposure to the plant toxins, we, we see that the mood improves a lot. Um, and also energy levels tend to improve a lot. Now, why is this an important thing to talk about when reintroducing meat? Well, the mistake I see a lot of people make is that they more or less continue on their old diet, just with a bit of meat thrown in. Um, so let's say I'm used to having a spinach salad for lunch. I have the same spinach salad uh, for lunch, but maybe, okay, today's the day I'm going to do it. I'm going to put in a bite of tuna or chicken or whatever on top. Um, and you like, you know, it tastes good. So you like the chicken, you like the tuna. You continue having your spinach salad just with maybe tuna on top or whatever it may be. That approach is not ideal. Uh, it leads to failure for many people, and at least it, it delays the transition to a healthier way of eating. Why? Well, let's talk about the spinach salad for a second. So uh, spinach, especially raw spinach, has a lot of oxalates. Um, oxalates are another anti-nutrient that can cause kidney stones and other issues. Um, oxalates are also known to uh, impair absorption of certain minerals, calcium, magnesium, and some others. Um, so you've added, you know, by adding, say, the tuna, 
You've added a nutrient-dense animal protein to your meal, but you're impairing your absorption of some of the key nutrients by continuing to eat that oxalate-rich plant food. So uh, what would be the advice? The advice would be to avoid the plant foods if you can. Um, if you don't want to avoid plant foods altogether, you don't have to. Um, you can keep some fruits in, especially lower sugar fruits like avocados or berries. Blueberries is a great choice. Um, you can also keep some vegetables in your diet, uh, but you want to make sure that they're cooked properly. So cooking that spinach salad would have um, gotten rid of most of the oxalates. Pressure cooking beans gets rid of a lot of the lectins, right? So you want to make sure that they're very well cooked to get rid of those anti-nutrients. Uh, but B, and maybe more importantly, you don't want to eat the things that you've been over-consuming as a vegetarian or a vegan, right? So if, if whatever it is, if soy or chickpeas or whatever it is, lentils have been getting you through life as a vegan, um, you want to shift away from that and find other sources, other plant foods to include in your diet um, with keeping in mind that you don't need to worry as much about protein as you once did if you're getting protein from animal foods. So just to summarize, mindset number one, nutrient density number two, and avoid the problematic plant foods that contain anti-nutrients number three. And again, please remember that you are not alone in this journey. Um, if you do this alone, you are far more likely to fail. Um, so please do try and find a support network, find those friends, find those family members. If you don't have them, feel free to reach out. Uh, my number is below. Uh, you can book a session with me for free. With that, thank you. I'm Samir. I'm a health coach and a PhD student based in Johannesburg. I'll see you next time.